एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर विनायक असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एंड एच ओ डी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी एस वी एस कॉलेज बंटवाल टूडे आई विल गिव एन इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट ए टॉपिक ऑन एकोलॉजिकल अडोप्टेशन ऑफ प्लांट सो फर्स्ट गोइंग टू वट आर अडोप्टेशन सो in a future of an organism or its part which enable it to exist under conditions of its habitat is called as adaptations there are different types of adaptations acquired by the organisms for the diversification in the nature the adapted may be morphological anatomical physiological or reproductive adaptations so going to the classification of the plant based on adaptation some of the plants are called as axolophyte some of them are halophyte samophyte or etc so generally so based on our availability of the water the plants are classified into different types that's one is hydrophytes that means the plants which are growing in water or near to the water second category they are called as xerophytes the plant adapted to survive under various uh, scarcity of the water there are two types of uh, uh, xerophyte that's a physiologically and physically xerophyte and the mesophytes these are the plant which grow in an environment which is neither very dry nor very wet these are the common plant which are growing in those condition are called as mesophytes so based on the availability of water or the resources the ecological adaptations of the plants are classified into axolophyte halophyte lithophyte and uh, cyclophytes uh, and sclerophytes so like that the plant are adapted to the different environmental conditions so based on your syllabus so we can look at first the morphological and anatomical adaptations of the hydrophytes so hydro means the plant water the plant which grow in a water those are called as hydrophytes for example valisneria hydrilla chara so these plants are generally refer as the hydrophytes so this is a hydrilla and this is a chara and this is a valisneria so like that the plant which are growing in a water body so those are refer as hydrophytes so these hydrophytes uh they are adapted to the different environmental conditions in a water bodies that may be temperature of the water osmotic concentration toxicity of the water and dissolved oxygen and also the nutrients so based on these the hydrophytes are classified into a three types one is submerged hydrophyte floating hydrophytes and the amphibious hydrophytes the first category that is a submerged hydrophyte the plant uh, which grow below the water surfaces they are not in direct contact with the air so there are two types of submerged hydrophyte one is a rooted submerged hydrophyte for example valisneria hydrilla potamogeton another one is free floating hydrophytes uh, that is utricularia and ceratophylla the some of the plant they are freely floating on a water surfaces those are called as free floating hydrophytes so the example for free floating hydrophytes are the uh, wolfia and pistia etc so and some of them are amphibious hydrophytes so they are in amphibious condition that they are completely not submerged inside the water or they may uh, the leaves are on floating on the leaf, water surfaces for example the nymphia marsilia sagittata so these are the some example for amphibious hydrophytes so going to the 
adaptations uh, ecological adaptations by the hydrophytes the first adaptation one is root system they are poorly developed the entire surfaces can absorb the water uh, root caps are usually absent so like that some uh, adaptations was adapted by the hydrophyte to uh, live in a water condition stem is very delicate usually greenish in color and leaves are free floating and upper surfaces of the so and they consist of usually the waxy cuticle will be there on a leaf surfaces so usually these are some other adaptations by the leaves and even pollination with the help of uh, water and usually the vegetative reproduction takes place is a common method of reproduction in these adaptation the morphological adaptations uh, root may be entirely absent in some plant just like gulfia and salvia and these are the some morphological adaptations and these are the anatomical adaptations the reduction in a protecting structure increase aeration by the consist of erenchyma cells and cuticle usually totally absent in submerged part and usually the epidermis is not protecting layers so like that so many adaptations by the hydrophytes and these are some other adaptations mechanical adaptations that is the mechanical tissues are uh, absent thick walled selenchymatous cells totally absent and usually this is an hydrilla stem showing the adaptations so these are some other vascular adaptations by the hydrophytes and this is the nymphia pitule showing the complete anatomical adaptations so look at uh, some uh, vascular structures the xylem is completely reduced because commonly they grow in a water so usually the conductive tissue that is the phloem is uh, uh, well developed and sometimes vascular bundles are towards the centric and secondary growth is completely absent in case of uh, these hydrophytes these are some physiological adaptations uh, was developed by the hydrophytes okay in the previous section we are discuss about the hydrophytes adaptations that continue with the adaptations of the mesophytes so usually the mesophytes root is well developed and the stem are generally aerial solid in nature and leaves are larger and broad and they consist of cuticle so these are some general adaptations epidermis is well developed stomata is generally present on both surfaces and usually leaves mesophyll leaf is differentiated in palisade and spongy parenchyma and they have the well developed vascular tissue system so the next one is the xerophytes so we can look at the morphological and anatomical adaptations of the xerophyte some of the xerophytic characters so that is generally they are grow in a dry conditions they are they may be physically or physiologically dry conditions so and the classification based on the drought resistance so drought escapers one is group of the plant uh, they will escape the drought condition second group they are the drought enduring plant and the third category is to drought resistance so these category of the plant of the xerophyte based on the uh, overcome of the drought or the physiological scarcity of the water the what are the morphological adaptations of the roots we can look at the first root system is very well developed because they are growing in a physically dry condition that means the water availability is very less so that's why the roots are well developed and they consist of root hairs and root crabs and usually the example for some xerophytes are the euphorbia opentia and the leaves are highly reduced and they are modified into a scales so usually in case of the lemon i may be long or narrow needle like in case of the pinus the leaf is completely modified into needles uh, in case of pinus or sometime maybe leaflet will be modified or the leaf is modified into foliage leaves so like that so many plants they will be modified into different uh, um, ecological conditions to overcome these xerophytic uh, conditions so some common best example for the xerophyte are the euphorbia acacia zizopus uh, caparis so these are all the some xerophytic plant 
So coming to the anatomical adaptations, here the anatomically if you take the cross section of the roots, so usually root hairs and root crabs are well developed and usually root may be fleshy or they consist of stored wart. In case of the asparagus, they, the root is modified into a small tuber like structure will be there. So like that the various anatomical adaptations by the plant to overcome these problems. So usually another one character that is hypodermis is the several layers and sclerenchymatous stomata or sunken in nature. So like that the plants anatomically mm, they have adopted a different uh, uh, structure to overcome these xeric uh, conditions. So leaves or uh, usually non-succulent xeropoid processes well developed heavy cuticle will be present example in case of the nerium the mesophyll is developed into palisade and spongy stomata is sunken type mechanical tissue is well developed when compared with the hydrophytes the xerophyte have a well developed uh, mechanical tissue so this is a uh, cross section ts part of the stem or needle of the casuarina they shows the stunken uh, stomata and usually the thick cuticle and also the epidermal layers and usually the spit will be present the next one group of uh, plant that's a halophytes these are the plant is commonly grow in a saline or the uh, usually grow in a salty environmental conditions they have the some adaptation that's a physiologically uh, dry condition here the usually the water will be there but it cannot be properly utilized by the plant that's why physiologically dry condition they have some adaptations of halophytes that's the one is vv parry condition that means the plant uh, seeds they will uh, germinate till they attach to the mother plant that's the one important adaptations and also they consist of pneumatophores they help ex help in exchanging of the gases the anatomical features of the um, halophytes are the the they consist of several layers of the cork cortex is made up of star shaped or the stellar cells epidermal cells are heavy thickened and hypodermis cortex are thickened in nature and usually the cuticle is well developed and sometimes these halophytes uh, consist of milky latex also and usually mesophyll is well developed so these are the some special adaptation adopted by the uh, halophytes to overcome the uh, ecological problems. In the previous section, we are discussed about the adaptations of plant to the different environmental conditions that continue with uh, the adaptations of the epiphytes. That's the morphological adaptations of the epiphytes. So usually the epiphytes they are commonly grow on other plant the only for the support they will take the help of the other plant and usually you know, they will have a special uh, root adaptations that is absorbing root will be occur in these plants and usually they will have a special uh, types of roots there are three types of root normal root uh, that is a normal absorbing root clanging root and also the aerial root will exist in these uh, plants. So usually the aerial root they consist of spongy and green root uh, which hanging downwards in the atmosphere and absorb the moisture from the air. So usually the stem of these um, epipytic plant they have well developed stem will be present and usually sometimes they may be a pseudo stem also present the leaves they are fleshy and leathery in nature and they are highly thickened uh, because to adopt some xerophytic uh, conditions by these uh, epiphytic plant and usually the velamen tissues these are the hygroscopic tissues they help for the absorption of moisture from the atmosphere and they consist of exod exodermal cells uh, they are thick walled and lignified cells and this how the Transverse section of the epiphytic roots shows the different structure that's a ca cortex tissues, air and chymus leaves, and also the protoxalum and metaxalum arrangement will be present. And this also shows the extradermal cells in the root of the epiphytes. 
so apart from that the other uh, anatomical feature presence of the critical sunken stomata will be present and they are look like a succulent plant okay, so these are the some ecological groups that's a hydrophytes epiphytes uh, and mesophyte and the xerophyte and also the halophytes so if you have any doubt or the questions so please uh, contact to the below number thank you